What's up guys, Twitchy here, back with the second part in the Arc Server Manager videos. What we're looking at today is the Administration tab. Now there's a lot of information in the Administration tab, so this video might run a little bit longer than the last one. It might not though, we'll kind of have to see how it goes. But without any further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so we're going to open up the Administration tab, and we're going to take a look here. As you can see, this is a rather large area. Um, in Arc Server Manager, and you know, honestly, it's it's a lot of good and important information, and some yeah, not so much. All right. So what we're gonna look at right now is we do not have a server named. All right. So let's go ahead and name our server. All right, so we've got a name, but what, what does that really even mean? Well, it's simple. If you go down here and actually hover over server name, it gives you a nice little, I'm, I'm going to call them a tooltip. I'm sure that's not what they are, but it gives you a nice little tooltip. And it says, the public name of the server as seen in Steam and in-game. So meaning when you're looking for the server, this is the name you're going to find it as. So name it whatever you want, whatever you want your friends to be able to look for and kind of go from there. The next sections are server passwords. Administration, basically, or administrator passwords, admin passwords, or spectator passwords. Um, we're going to go ahead and set up this server as though it is a password protected server. We will get into exclusive join and whitelisting servers in other sections, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and set it to uh, be anything we want, right? This any password you would want it to be. Try to make sure if it's a password protected server that it's secure. Um, and not easily guessed. You don't want uninvited people in your servers. But for now, I'm just going to put this is mine, okay? Um, these, of course, are not passwords that you should use. Duh. All right. So that means right now that we have a server that has a name and we have passwords set on that server for whenever um, people want to join it. Now, the next part of this is your local IP. When I first did the Arc Server Manager videos, this did not matter. You could do the let me choose and it wasn't a big deal. Somewhere along the way in Unreal servers, multi-home became an important thing, okay? And basically, without multi-home, you can't connect to your server locally, which is really weird, and I don't know why or what happened, but we're definitely going to go down and we're going to select our local IP address. Now, you see that I have it on a wireless IP address. Please, God, for the love of God, do not run your servers on wireless, okay? So we're just gonna go after that. Server port and peer, uh, server port 7777, that's the default. We did the firewall rules on that there on the last video. If you need help doing um, firewall rules or port forwarding, please see that video. Um, but we're going to leave those all together like that. Uh, Archon basically allows you to manage your server through command line. Um, if you guys want to use Archon, you can. If you want to be able to access your Archon, you make sure that you do your port business and your firewall business to the Archon stuff. Map name or mod path for a map, right? The standard map name. Da, da, da. We're just going to do the island. You can see there's a lot of different things. We're just going to do the island for this one. Total conversion mods. This is where you would do your primitive plus. Um, again, we're not going to do that. Mod IDs. We will cover mods in a different video. But for now, what you need to know is this is where you would put your mod IDs if you were going to do a modded server. Um, you use basically this little button right here but it, it takes a while. Uh, but you'd be able to search your mods in there. Like I said, we'll go over that um, in a different video specifically based on mods. Your auto save times, I find that on the auto save times, 15 minutes is normally pretty good. If you have a very unstable server, it could be because of the 15 minute backups or you may want to increase the time, you know, uh, decrease the time of your backups. But for the most part, I find the 15 minutes does the trick pretty well. 
most people, if a server crashes, it doesn't, you know, a couple of minutes, 15 minutes, like it's, it's a loss, but it's not a terrible loss. Okay, so message of the day you guys can put on. So when somebody enters your server, they get a message that pops up on the screen. You know, it could be, hey, today's PvP day, please, um, you know, fight each other respectfully. Or welcome to the server, I hope you have a great day. Duration is how long it shows up on the screen. And interval, basically, you can set it up that every 60 minutes it's popped up on the screen or however long you want it to come up on it. We're going to go down into server options. Uh, a lot of these things we're not going to go over in detail just because for most of us, it doesn't affect us, right? So like the ban list, we don't really do um, ban list when we're hosting our own servers because we're not generally hosting public servers. This is more for something if, if you're hosting a public server that anybody can search and anybody can join, you may want to have a ban list because there's lists out there for, you know, bad actors. Um... Disable Valve anti-cheat system. If this is your own server, I would suggest doing that. Um, I would not suggest enabling BattleEye. Uh, only because if, it, if it's friends and you're just playing with friends, like that stuff is just resources you don't need to spend time on. Uh, disable player move physic optimization. Most of these you're going to leave kind of where they're at. Um, no hang detection. No dinos. If enabled, no dinos will spawn on the map. Like I said, go down through these with the tooltips. You can hover over them. You see what you need, and you can kind of go on from there. I'm just going to look down them real quick to see if there's any ones that, uh, that really pop out at me as important. Okay, so the important ones that I see on this list, especially, are going to be the Enable Crossplay, Epic Store Players Only, and enable public IP for Epic. We're gonna go over those sections of this in their own video when we're gonna we're gonna do a crossplay video of how to get your servers to be crossplay. Um, so we'll go over that at a later date, and we're gonna keep on a moving down into the next section. So the next section we're looking at here has things like a bad word filter, you know, like Guys, it's, it's 2023, everything's a bad word anymore. So like, if you wanna filter out bad words, that's a place that you can do it from. Um, filter tribe names, filter character names, and filter chat. So like all of those things are, you know, again, these are good for, I guess, public servers. We haven't really ran into that problem in my communities that we've had ARC servers on because we're all a bunch of friends playing the game. So if you're just hosting things for your friends, I wouldn't worry about these until it becomes a problem. All right. And then I would talk to my friends. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on down server log options, enable server admin logs. That might be something you want to do just so you have it. I haven't found that I've ever really needed it. And all of this comes down um, to pretty much that. All right, so now we're down into the command line section and we're looking at affinity of the CPU. Basically, it's saying it can use all processor cores, which is great. Um, you may want to change that if you're gaming on the same box that you're hosting your server on. You may only want it to use like two cores or whatever. Um, launcher arguments, we're not really, we don't really have anything here, but if you did have additional launcher arguments that you wanted to use, you could add them into this area. Um, and then the server arguments, those are going to be handled in command line. You can click the command line button and it'll show you exactly what you got going on here. And that's pretty much the administration tab in a nutshell. Uh, like I said, we're going to go back over a couple of those things in more detail in other videos. The first one is going to be cross play. Um, well, actually the first video we do probably will be mods. Um, and then the other one will be about crossplay. Okay, I did buy the game on Epic, so I just need a chance to get through the testing phases of that before we go on it. All right, so yeah, that's the administration tab. I hope it helped you guys out. I hope you, um... but yeah, guys, that's the administration tab. I hope it helped you guys out. If you have any questions, please let me know. I will try to answer them to the best of my ability, and uh, I hope to see you next time.